talk, so. I don't even remember what I put in there. What's his name? It's not the best one. No. You are. Okay. All right, we have a couple of quick housekeeping items real quick. Um, Chris Sater and John Bajuke, um, you guys were selected for EPC. Um, if you're in here, go see them for the, for the giveaway. Um, but just wanted to take care of that real quick. Um, our next presenter is Timothy DeBlock. A pre- DeBlock. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> A presenter, Sir, City Sec meetup meetup organizer and podcast producer. His previous speaking opportunities include B sides Augusta and DerbyCon. As co organizer of Colasac and the OWASP Columbia chapter, he prov- provides members with guidance and mentor- mentorship on getting into and advancing a career in information security. Mister Mister DeBlock also produces two weekly podcasts. The PVC Security Podcast stands for Passion, Vision, Communication, and Execution. Along with his co-host, he provides career advice for those in information security. The Exploring Information Security podcast explores various information security topics with a diff- different professional. Thank you. Each time, I assume, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah each week, yep. <laughs> Wording, yes, right. absolutely. All right. I'm going to gra- grab the mic here. Can you guys hear me? All right, mic technique, very important. Uh, so my name, as, as mentioned, thank you for the intro, Dan is Timothy D. Block. My Twitter handle is there, Timothy D. Block, if you want to tweet at me, troll me, whatever. Um, so my talk is how to build Homeland. And this is a very basic talk. This is, uh, we're going to be walking through a few different labs within 15 minutes, uh, all within a 45 minute talk. The, uh, this podcast was a result of me going to my second security conference. And one of the bits of career advice they gave me was build a home lab. You want to get into information security, build a home lab. You want to advance a career in information security, build a home lab. So I went up to one of the speakers after their talk and said, so how do I build a home lab? They said, download Cali and just go at it. Uh, not very helpful for me. Uh, I tend to overthink things. Um, so I kind of wanted to give this talk to kind of, you know, demystify some of the complexity. And if you're like me and you overthink things, it's really, it's really not that complicated to get started. So as typical of uh, conference speakers, shameless plug time, uh, I do produce the Exploring Information Security podcast, uh, different uh, inf- information security professional each week covering a different, mis- different information security topic. Um, and as I tend to do, when I got accepted to this talk, I produced an episode on that. I've actually got three total episodes on that podcast from, from discussing different things. It's about 20 minutes long. Um, and then there's also the PVC security podcast, which stands for passion, vision, communication, and execution. The E is silent. 
that's more leadership, uh, career advice type stuff. Um, and then I like to mention uh, the Colasec. I, I'm a uh, co-founding member. It's a city sec. If there's a city sec in your area, go to it. It's a great place to network with people. Um, when we found when we spun it up is that we didn't have a lot of information security professionals coming to the meetup. We had a lot of security enthusiasts. So we ended up doing a lot of home lab type stuff. It's a great, great uh, place, monthly meeting to, to go just discuss information security and get, you know, improve the community. Um, if there's not one in your area, think about starting it up. I can tell you from trying to market a city sec, they might be a little bit harder to find. Um, but certainly, you know, do, do a little bit more due diligence to see if you can't find one. Um, I've been in IT for 14 years, security the last four, um, just to give you my, my credentials, my IT credentials. Before we actually dive into home labs, disclaimer, don't pwn anything you don't own. Uh, recently in the news, the FBI broke down a security researcher's door because he logged into an FTP server. And the organization that he logged into, he reported it, the organization he logged into initiated the CFAA, the, Compu the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, which is meant to go after criminals, but, you know, companies are wielding it to go after, you know, well, well being, uh, well intended individuals. So be very careful about that. And a home lab is supposed to be an environment for you to kind of do some of this stuff. And if you really want to go poke other stuff, and we'll, we'll talk about that briefly later, is there's bug bounty programs out there. So there are plenty of opportunities to, uh, get all this done in a safe environment. There's a lot of tools here that we're going to kind of talk over that can get you in trouble. All right. So who is this talk for? Well, it's for newbies. Uh, ski mask, hoodie, and gloves, not required. It's, it's also for the information security professional. Uh, you've seen Johnny Christmas and, uh, Dave Kennedy already talk at the conference. Um, both those guys consider themselves still, uh, newbies within the industry. They're still constant learning. Security is an ever changing thing. To keep up uh, with security, you, a home lab is very important. So why? Well, one of the first things you're going to be asked in an interview, whether you're trying to get in or you're switching jobs within information security is, what does your home lab look like? That's a favorite of a lot of people. And it's a great talking point to have. Uh, my, I've recently switched jobs. Uh, I am now in application security and I was able to, um, I have a lot of, my background is in infrastructure. So I did a lot of sysadmin, net admin, system analyst type work. Uh, I'm trying, I want to get into application security. So, um, as part, prior to, uh, the interviews, I was going to code academy. I was going to W3 schools because I need to get my programming skills to really be effective in application security. It was three levels. And each time they asked me, what have you done this time? to improve your programming skills. So I was able to ramble all that off. It's an easy question. You're gonna get asked it. And if you're not gonna get asked it, it's a good point to bring up to show that you have initiative and drive. Uh, Data-Driven Security is a wonderful book. I went in for a SOC analyst role and I was going through that book at the time. And I was able to talk about that because in the job description were metrics and having to deal with metrics. So, um, yeah. And then with, uh, within your career, you want to level it up. You want to be improving your skills, constantly trying to learn new things. A home lab is going to help you accomplish that. Some of the things I've done is uh, I previously worked on a blue team where it was a three-man blue team. We had everything across the board, vulnerability management. We had uh, incident response. We, I had to manage the antivirus server, the web application firewall, everything. Um, and then they came to me and said, we need to get security into our software development life cycle. No idea what I'm doing with that. Uh, I went and Googled, found OWASP, which is the Open Web Application Security Project. They've got a lot of great tools and a lot of tools that will allow you to build stuff within an environment. I found uh, Bricks and the OWASP Z Attack Proxy or ZAP. Uh, Bricks is a local uh, like web server that you can set up and run through certain vulnerabilities and try to exploit them. Knowing that I was able to take zap, which is a tool. Uh, it's a dynamic, uh, analyzer tool for looking at applications. Um, I was able to throw that at bricks to get a better understanding of how I need to be using zap so I can start finding some of these vulnerabilities. Uh, I ended up in a SOC role, SOC analyst role, applied network security monitoring, by Chris Sanders and Jason Smith is a very good book. 
It walks through how to set up Security Onion. If you're going to be working in the stock analyst or do some kind of network security monitoring, Security Onion is a term and a tool you're going to hear about constantly. So having a good understanding um, of that is good. Uh, particularly the second part of the book, which talked about investigating and how to perform an investigation was really good about the book too. So that really gave me confidence in the SOC analyst role, uh, to really do a more effective job. And then I've already talked about data driven security. If, um, I don't know if anyone was in Erica's talk, but da data is going to become more of a big thing within information security. It, it kind of already is. I mean, you see it in all sorts of sports, baseball, football, basketball. Uh, you see it in gaming, um, that's coming. So ha you don't have to know a whole lot about it and how to necessarily, but have a basic understanding of it is, is going to be good and vital because being able to do data driven security is going to help you make better decisions within your environment or, you know, do things like anomaly detection. All right. So what is a home lab? Now we're really getting to the meat of it. Well, it can be this, and this is where the overcomplicatedness of of my thinking went, was I needed a rack, I needed servers. You go to this guy's YouTube links and he's got a pretty good setup. Uh, cabling, router, you know, flashed with open WRT or PF Sense, or, you know, I know a guy, a really good system administrator, he loves doing this kind of stuff. He's got Mac minis and vCenter set up to do virtual servers at his house. And then he's got it backed up to three different locations within the state. If you want to do that, that's great. That's absolutely great. You don't need to. Um, you can have this. This is what I'm running on. I have my home lab with me. I have a Toshiba satellite. That's, that's really all you need. And you, you might even need less than this. Um, for, for Apple people, you can use a MacBook. Uh, here are my specs of the satellite on the, on the, on the left there. Uh, the MacBook Pro is for a buddy of mine, Chris Madalena, who I did this as a training for Circle City Con. It's a two hour, it was about two hours long. So this is again only, I had to carve it down to only 45 minutes for this conference. But I will be putting that up on YouTube later when I get home. Uh, and I'll make all the resources available on my website. Um, contact information will be at the end of the talk. Um, so you can kind of see some differences here. The MacBook Pro has a little bit more memory. I have a little bit more storage. I don't deal with virtual machines a whole lot. I, I still do from time to time. Um, but I deal with application security. I do a lot of OWASP projects. A lot of that stuff I don't necessarily need a virtual virtual machine for um eight gigabytes of memory is probably about what you want to what you want to be at that's the minimum you want to go if you're going to be doing virtual machines uh chris is a uh, penetration tester so he spins up cali and a couple vms and you know goes and and goes in his lab environment so he goes for a little bit more memory um so now we're getting into how these are your virtual machine options there are some other ones out there but these are the two main ones. You've got virtual or, or Oracle virtual box, uh, which is free, completely free. And then you've got VMware workstation. Uh, you've also got uh, for windows and then VMware fusion for Mac. Um, the VMware workstation is, there is a license to it. You can get a free version of it. If you want to give up your email or a burner email, um, there's also a VM player out there. If you can find an old download for that. Uh, then you don't have to really give up anything. You just download it. I actually have VM player on here, but that's because I was using it back when VM player was, was kind of still around. Um, snapshots are what you get with Alliance and some other features, but snapshots being the main one are a godsend when, when we're talking about working in a, in a home lab environment, because then you can snapshot a machine, go out and play with it and then screw it up and then just revert back to snapshot. If you have to do an update on a framework, you can run that update. And if it hoses something, you can just revert back to it. This is basic system administration. Um, the license is based on my research between 50 and $200. I mean, if you're going to be looking to get in, for, in information security or advance your career, make a little more money, that's, that's not a bad investment. So after you've got your virtual machine, you go for your choosing your lab. On the blue team side, you have uh, Security Onion. You've got the SANS Investig Investigative Forensics Toolkit, SIFT. And then you've got Cuckoo for Malware Analysis. On the red team side, you've got Kali Linux and Samurai Web Testing Framework, which is what we'll actually be spinning up during this talk. Then, sorry, I'm letting some people take some pictures. 
Uh, also, um, if you don't get a picture, don't worry. Again, I'm going to put all these slides online. I am a, I have just accepted that Google is, you know, <laughs> my overlord. So I have all my stuff on Google Drive. So I will make it freely available on my website. Um, at Circle City Con, I got into a good discussion with a good friend, Wolfgang Gorlick, and he told me about, uh, ICS SCADA labs. I had no idea those were allowed. Um, ICS, for those that don't know, is industrial control systems. They're hitting the news a little bit more. People are paying attention to it a little bit more. These um, are your options. You got Cybota Works, Digital Bond, and Samurai STFU. I don't have much experience with them, I, so I can't really uh, speak to them that much. But I did uh, drop a YouTube link in uh, the resources slide to someone who won the Def DEFCON uh, ISC CTF, and she talks about using some of that stuff. So resources galore. And then outside of VMs, you don't necessarily need a VM um, to to get a home lab going. Um, I There's a great website called Over the Wire. All you need is uh, PuTTY, um, which is just an EXE file that you use for SSHing, and we'll walk through that. And then as I mentioned, OWASP bricks. UAMP is all I need for that, and that's a an Apache, PHP, and SQL server all combined. It took me maybe about an hour to two hours to set it up. Um, all the stuff online now for building a home lab is well documented. Um, so it's, it's really kind of what you want to do. And again, this is a very basic talk because there are so many different kinds of labs, home labs that you can set up that I can't really go through any one because it might not be what you're looking for. So uh, demo time. All right, and as I mentioned, this is just a very, very basic setup here. Um, I'm going to show you how to install VirtualBox to start out. So, and this is a little bit like a cooking show where I have a lot of things prepared. The most time you'll take to set up a home lab is probably downloading the ISOs or VMD, VMDK files or whatever you want. And, you know, I, I just basically go with default. I mean, again, you don't need to, you can kind of pick stuff here and there, but don't be afraid to just go default because a lot of this stuff you can change uh, after the fact. Um, so, and we're going to watch a progress bar here, and I can't remember what he usually filled this time with. <laughs> no, I, I, is, I, I is that, that's fairly new, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I hadn't, I hadn't played around with it. So the question was why I don't use Hyper-V for Windows 10. I haven't messed around with it. I am, um, I loved Windows 7, so I stuck with it as long as possible. I recently upgraded my laptop. My desktop at home still needs to update. And there we go. Are there any other questions so far? Yeah. Okay, so for the blue team, the question was what VMs they use for the blue team. It's uh, their security onion, which is for network security monitoring. There is also the SANS Investigative Forensics Toolkit. If you do a search for SANS SIFT, S-I-F-T, um, that's for forensics and, th and stuff. Uh, and then Cuckoo, C-U-C-K-O, uh, is for kind of malware analysis. Were there any other questions? Yeah. The, that's something I'm going to be getting into now that I'm in an app. I just started my application security role probably, uh, what was it, uh, about a month, month and a half ago. So, yeah, do I have Docker. I actually have, I think I, I don't know if I don't here. I think I have it on my home computer. But, yeah, Docker is something. And, if yeah, if you're in, like, development or application security, that would be something to uh, mess around with. I know Doc, they have Zap on Docker now. Uh, which is something I tried getting working and I couldn't get working. So, uh, I still got to play around with it. Um, you can kind of see here too. I'm going to actually, I'm going to go ahead and load up. So spinning up your first VM easy. I mean, there's even a guided mode here for if you want to, uh, have it like step you through kind of like an installation. Let's speed this up a little bit taller. So, uh, I'm going to name it here. So we're going to do, we're going to do the Samurai, like I said. 
click on Linux. It's a Ubuntu. I'm going to give it about um, four gigabytes of memory just to get the demo moving a little bit faster. And then, and again, I, I downloaded all this already. So it would take me 30 minutes to two hours. It took me about 30 minutes to, to download this. It's going to be based on your ISP. And then I hit create and there's my Samurai WTF box. Oh, I hit new. Should have hit play or start. So uh, it's going to, now it's just going to start up. And that's pretty much it. I will have in a few minutes here, Samurai WTF set up. Um, what's so, and, and for, for those that don't know or aren't familiar with some of these frameworks, they, they kind of give you a bunch of different tools depending on what you want to do. Uh, so the SIFT has a bunch of different tools. This Samurai has a bunch of different tools, which I will, uh, walk through or I'll show you a few that are on the framework. Um, and then Kali is, is, I think a lot of, most people know what Kali is, but it's got a lot of different tools for you to do different thing with, with, uh, network penetration testing. Is there a question? Yeah. Yeah. So Oracle VirtualBox is free. Uh, VMware Workstation, you can get free or you can go either trial 30 days or you can get free for if you uh, just sign up with like an email or something. Yeah. Uh, the operating system. Yes. No, Samurai WTF is free. All, all the VMs that I showed earlier, uh, should be free. I haven't, I haven't really run into a paid, um, virtual machine. I mean, and you, uh, say that again. Yeah. I was just about to say that. Yes. Well, I actually have a workaround for that. Um, <laughs> not like you think we'll talk about that in a minute, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can, if you want to spin up like an actual OS, like windows or something, you're going to need to get a license. Um, but most of these frameworks that people are putting out are, are open source and available for you to just go download. Yes, sir. Yeah, you can, well, yeah, you can go and change your settings. Well, well I'm going to actually, uh, I don't do a lot with networking. Um, there is, so on my podcast, I had a follow up episode with a guy named Brian Hearn. He's a listener that actually gave me some really good feedback. GNS3 is what he told me he uses for networking in his home lab. And he's able to, what he's able to do with that is he's able to, set up like a router to a firewall to an IDS. And so what he's able to do with that then is, is attack, like go through like an attacker and then go to the blue team side and kind of see what's going on there. GNS3. Yep. Yes, sir. Okay. So the gentleman here said there's a, there's a VMware version of GNS3. Okay. So. There you go right there. Yeah, there's a lot. This is like a great time. I was talking to somebody who's like 10 years ago. We had to get servers and all this. No, like you don't really need all that much now. You can, and there's a lot of, like I said, great documentation out there for you to get started. All right. So we've got the Samurai WTF set up. Um, and then I've got, like I said, Zap on there. I've got, it's, there's an alternative burp. Um, let me go on a minute tangent here. If you're working in application security, uh, burp is something that everyone's going to tell you that you need to know. Uh, I believe you need to know both. I use Zap because it's free. Burp has a free version, but it's throttled. It's $300 a year for a subscription to Burp. Um, I am in the process of learning Burp myself a little bit better. I mean, I've had, some, I've, I've used it before, but I need to get a better understanding of it. So that's kind of the difference between the two there. Um, if you're looking to just kind of poke around application security, I, I definitely say start with Zap. Um, and then you got these cool other little tools. For application security, like cool, you got beef, uh, all sorts of stuff. Um, so, you know, you got this set up. Now you want to spin it up. Um, I'm not going to, I'm going to spin up something different because we're going to talk about that in a minute, but this is from Vulnhub. It's just an o OVA file. So there's two ways you can get VMs in depending on the file. Um, I just showed you how to get a VMDK file into VirtualBox. This one for OVA is even easier. I just double clicked it and I'm going to hit import. And this will take a few minutes. This is probably the longest part of it, but it will, um, it will pretty much start up a VM and then I just have to kick it up. Um, I'm actually just going to shut down. So for people who need to know how to shut down, you can suspend this stuff. So you, if you're in the middle of something and you, 
I don't know, by accident, hit the X mark when you don't need to because you have like a browser and a browser open. Um, it will suspend it and you can just restart it or you can send like a shutdown. Um, it's all very much, it's all pretty easy. I, th this, like I said, this is a very basic talk to get people like comfortable and like understand it's, it's not really that hard to get started with it. And I want to, I like giving you guys something actionable to take home. You can get the long, like I said, the longest it's going to take you is to download this stuff. So let's see if the Voln Hub stuff and the Voln Hub really isn't anything. I'll start it up, but the Voln Hub isn't going to be anything special. It's just going to be a command prompt. And that Voln Hub is a site where they make intentionally vulnerable uh, boxes for you to use to break into like Kali or other tools. You don't necessarily need Kali. You can manually try to break into them, um, but they don't give you an interface because uh, you can't go try to find the flags through like windows or something. Um, so they do, you know, and, and they know people try to go around that way. So this is where I'm talking about here where you can go and change settings after the fact. Uh, so I got an error here. I'm going to change it to NAT and then hit OK. And that fixes the networking issue and it's going to start up. So that's pretty much virtual machines um, in itself. I mean, each... The, I didn't do VMware Workstation, but it's it's a lot similar. Um, and again, there's great documentation and get great guides out there on how to get this started up. Uh, what I want to do now is kind of break out of the VM mold. And somehow I just closed that. You can see. I'll have to go back to my talk in a minute. There it is. So over the wire it, org is a great site. Um, this starts you off at the very, very basic. We're going for the, through the first two challenges, but they get progressively harder. Uh, Chris Madalena, penetration tester, actually just won Net Wars at Circle City Con. He says he's only made about through half of it. It's like a single player game. Um, and it kind of walks you through, like Bandit here will walk you through kind of Linux command basics. Um, So our first challenge is to SSH into this server, banditslabs.overthewire.org. So this is where we grab PuTTY. And again, PuTTY doesn't install anything. It's just an EXE file. And that's all that that is right there. Type in banditlabs.overthewire.org. And it gave me the password and username, or the username and password is bandit0. So bandit0, bandit0. And I've just completed the first challenge. So we go to the next challenge, which is zero one. So it wants me to find a file called readme and open it for the password. So I'll give you the answer again. LS. Oh, look, there's the readme file. Let me cat, cat it open. There is my password. So I just copy that. Yeah, there's other commands. So, so that's, yeah, there's, there's, they give you hints. They don't give you the answer, but they give you hints of what you need to do. And this is where you go Google stuff. This is where you kind of try to figure it out. The number one tool of all IT is Google. Yes, absolutely. It is your best friend. Absolutely right. So, uh, now that we have the password, we want to go to the next level. Um, and you just pretty much log, oh, I did that again. Open up VM. There's VM, there's VMware player for anyone interested. Um, you can save the login so I don't have to type it again. Uh, but it told me that the, the, the next username was bandit one. It's going to drop you in a different place. And then I copy that in the, and then I just right click, hit enter and I'm in. And then if I LS list where I'm at, I have a dash, which is the next challenge, which is open a dash file, which isn't just cat dash. You have to actually go Google the answer. I'm not going to go through anymore. Um, but that pretty much helps you get started with that. Um, the other thing I would like to show you is so, and this is this is the uh, this is the Voln Hub stuff right here. Um, that's all it is. Uh, that's it. It's not really anything to get excited about. But I can then go now and and mess with it. Um, I don't know if anyone's curious, but this is the Facebook CTF. So this is kind of what I use virtual machines for. Uh, Facebook put their CTF online, capture the flag online that you can then use internally. 
Uh, I'm not going to spin it up, uh, but you can. I, I use this my home lab to spin it up and kind of poke around in there. And this might be something that I, I want to have a CTF game with the developers. I can create all my own challenges based on what is needed within our environment. So another good use for a home lab is that. So my other thing I'd like to show you is UAMP because UAMP is awesome. Um, we will go to the brick site, which is going to be on my machine. And as you can see here, localhost 8080 bricks. That's, that's all it is. I'm going to use my own machine. So I actually don't need like an internet connection or anything. And there it is. All I did was fire up UAMP. This took me about an hour, two hours to set up. Bricks has a great, great documentation for getting this set up. Uh, it was really easy. I didn't need like a lot of web, web administration experience to set it up. Um, and that's that's all it is. Now I just have to hit double click it and it's just going to start right away. Um, don't be afraid if you're getting an application security for OWASP. Uh, don't be afraid to use stuff that's like several years old because there really hasn't been a lot that's changed within application security. Bricks, I don't believe, has been updated since 2013, but it still works and it works great. And he's got a lot of great videos that show you how to manually exploit a lot of these different vulnerabilities. And it's it's just a simple site here. So my zap scans don't take forever. So the bigger your application, zap scans are going to take a lot longer to spider and go through the directory browse and things like that. Um, and then, like I said, having an understanding of the manual uh, exploitation that, that I can do on these websites is good for then going to Zap and saying, okay, did I find this in there as well? Um, so, and it's got file upload page and content pages. Again, there's tons of stuff out there. Goat.js is out there for JavaScripting and they have, you can download it um, or you can, you know, use, I think they have a demo site. I'm not sure. I went there, they recently updated, so I'm not sure if that demo site's still out there. I was having a little problem going through it, but um, yeah, you can download it. So what I did for my, one of my interviews was um, grab uh, Goat.js, the entire thing, and then just went through and uh, looked for some of the vulnerable code. So I could say that was part of my, you know, home lab that I'm, I'm trying to get a better understanding of programming and application security. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it um, for, for, for the actual demos themselves um let's see yep so and you can see within 10 15 minutes i had a few different labs set up so this this really doesn't take a lot of time to get set up and get started uh, i closed my oh. All right, so other lab options. And some of these were stretching labs a little bit. Uh, I, you know, con CTFs are great for this kind of stuff. Besides Augusta last year, one of the cool things that they did was that they rented out computers essentially and allowed you to go through different vulnerable things and challenges in like a single player mode that went up on a board. It, you know, to get, to get to the top of the board, you got to start at the bottom. Um, so, and I, I've had several friends that like doing CTF and I've asked, can I just come and hang out with you? I mean, don't go bug them constantly, especially if they're in competition against other people, they might not like that, but just ask to go sit behind them and you might learn a thing or two. So it's, those are really great. Again, I've mentioned OS projects. I've probably beat the application security drum to death here, but that's what I'm in now. Um, volunteer. So this is where we're talking about getting around. Cyber Patriot is a program put on by the Air Force. And they work with middle school and high school students. Uh, you can become a mentor and um, work with them. They do. They don't do any red team stuff. They do all blue team stuff. So uh, patch patching and setting configuration and harding hardening of workstations. Um, and then they go do it in like a competition setting. Uh, one of the great benefits of being a mentor is that they give you access to their Microsoft shop, which has all the licenses you could ever want. Visio. Windows 7, Windows 10. Uh, so that's what I was talking about when you get, can get around that. So um, that's an option. And then bug bounty programs, Hacker One, Bug Crowd are two of the big ones. Uh, those are those have a low bar. Just register and you can go see what stuff you can poke at. Um, you can download stuff to do, you know, on your own lab. You don't. It doesn't necessarily have to be all over the wire, um, but it can be. And then books. Uh, books are one of my favorite things to do for home labs. 
Um, I've talked about data driven security, um, uh, by Jay Jacobs and, uh, Bob Rudis. Um, great guys. Anytime I had a problem, I was able to email them and ask them what they do is each chapter is kind of a different exercise that you can go through and learn about data and how to carve it out using R and Python and then be able to plot it out to make it visually appealing to management or just to kind of make better decisions about stuff within information security. Um, uh, again, it was very beneficial for me in like a SOC analyst role because we had to deal with metrics and things like that. And then I've already talked about applied network security monitoring uh, by Chris Sanders and Jason Smith. And then what I'm going through now is Web Application Hackers Handbook by, and I know I'm going to butcher this, Defad Studert and Marcus Pinto. Def Defad is, uh, he's the creator of Burp Suite. So that's what makes this book great for me and wanting to get a better understanding of Burp is that uh, he's going through vulnerabilities and their exploitation. And then I'm able to, after I read it, go go to Burp Suite and kind of play around with it, see if I can't do the same thing. Um, it's 800 pages. I'm only through the first 100 right now. Uh, so it's going to take me a little bit of time. S say that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Application security. It's, yeah, it's a pretty big field. Um, so, so, uh, books, books are great. And there's, there's tons of other ones. You know, they handed out a malware, practical malware analysis book. I'm sure that's got great exercises, you know, uh, whatever it is that counts as a home lab. I mean, that's because you're doing stuff to, to kind of feed your curiosity and improve your skill set. So now that you've got your home lab up, up now what? Um, again, documentation. You're going to be reading a lot of documentation. If you're just getting into IT or information security, you're going to need to read documentation. It's just how it is. The documentation is what's going to give you the answer and kind of give you a better understanding of what the underlying system is and how to, you know, accomplish certain things. I've spent a lot of time in documentation. The OWASP Broken Web Application VM. So that's a full VM. It's got UAMP on it. It's got a lot of other tools on it. Uh, I can spin that up and do that, or you, you can spin that up and do it. And then VolnHub we've talked about. Um, there's also PFSense and OpenWRT for the networking people. Um, you know, having a good networking base is really good for information security. Uh, or in Chris's case, who's the penetration tester, when he goes owns a network, he's got to give them uh, reasons or, or kind of mitigating steps that he, that they the business can't perform, so that you know next year when he comes in, he doesn't he has a more difficult time getting in. Uh, one of those um, one of those recommendations was network segmentation. So he needed to know how to do network segmentation. He has uh, like a master's in forensics and he's got an OSCP, but he hasn't necessarily worked in a networking environment a whole hours as a network administrator. So what did he do? He turned his home network into his home lab, started segmenting things there, flashed his router with, I believe it was PFSense, and started uh, chopping up his network, you know, separating his printers from his computer, from his media server. Uh, from his wireless, um, you know, getting a better understanding of that. So don't be afraid to use your home lab to, uh, to, to, you know, play around in. Um, you might tick off your, your, some of the people on there, but, um, in fact, I was riding here with another speaker and she said her boyfriend, uh, was doing this at home and he kept kicking his roommate off. And his roommate would keep coming to him going, what's wrong with him? Well, just give me your computer and I'll fix it. So uh, he's kind of toying around with it there trying to, and he wants to get into a networking role. So use what's available to you. So after doing the first podcast on how to build a home lab, this was a really good question that we had come up. Um, how do you find the time? And it seems pretty obvious. You got to make it a priority. Like anything in life, you've got to make it a priority. Uh, if, if you say you don't have time, that, that really just means I don't have, I'm not making this enough of a priority right now. Now, do you need to spend two hours in there a night? No, you don't, you don't need to be in there constantly. I will pick up a lab for a few months and then drop it for a few months just based on needs. So do it as you need to do it. You don't, you can, if you can spend 30 minutes in there a week, that's great. Uh, if you don't need to spend any time in there at all, that's, that's fine too. It's, it's not a big thing. You don't need to be in there for two hours a night. If you want to be in there for two hours each night, that's great. And that's really going to help you out, but it's not something that you really have to, um, be, do a whole lot of. So, um, this is for pictures. Again, I will make the, uh, slides available on my website, which will be the last slide here. 
Uh, this is a lot of the different stuff I've talked about. Um, home labs are great for if you're trying to figure out what you want to do in information security. It kind of gives you an opportunity to play with a bunch of different fields and different areas, kind of see what you like, kind of see what you don't like, uh, things like that. All right, so uh, this is another another resource link, more more refined. Um, episode thirty eight there is how to build a home lab, and then episode thirty nine is how to find the time to build a home lab. I have Brian Hearns up to it released uh, not this past Sunday, the Sunday before. Again, exploring information security podcast, new podcast every Sunday night at eight p.m. And then there's the YouTube link for um, uh, Cato Vag Kate on Twitter. Uh, her talk at MySec to discuss um, uh, the the Cybata and the ICS home lab type stuff. So, um, yeah, go there if you're really interested in that. And then Circle City Con training again. We went through two hours of this Circle City Con, kind of talking a little bit more. I had Chris there with me, so he went a little bit more into the virtual machine settings and kind of explained it a little bit more. Uh, I will put those up in two parts on YouTube. Again, you can reach it at my site. Um, or you can email me and I'll shoot it to you whenever I get it. And then, of course, irongeek.com, where, you know, this is where this is going to end up uh, as a recorded session. So you can refer back to um, Iron Geek is Adrian Crenshaw is is has done does a ton of content. So if you don't know about his site, go to his website. That's that's he's got a ton of videos there for you to peruse and kind of figure out. And there's more people talking about more specific lab type stuff. And that's that's pretty much it. Um, again, there's my contact information. Feel free to email me if you want the slides. Uh, I am on Twitter at Timothy D Block. Um, and then my website is timothydblock.com. Really hard, I know. Uh, and I will put a post up with all the different resources available in the one post so that people start emailing me like next week. I'll have all that one one location. So are there any questions? And if anyone had any suggestions on things that I missed, I love hearing that too. I always find that, you know, there, there's a ton of different home labs and someone's already got something uh, different than what I have. Yes, sir. I have not. It's, it's possible. I mean, I'm no system minister. Like I said, the system minister pretty much did something like that. So I have not, but it's possible. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, lab guides. Yeah, you want to get. Okay, so he's giving me a suggestion. Labguides.com has auto labs. So auto labs, like it it's automatically sets up stuff that you want to do. OVA files. Okay. So they automatically like set up a whole virtual environment for you to play around. Okay, so uh, labguides.com, um, like I said, good resource. Yes, sir. Yeah, the, the Cyber Patriot program, like I said, if you become a mentor, you can get access to their, uh, they'll give you access, a login to micro, like a Microsoft store that gives you, huh? DreamSpark, that's what it is. Yep. So Dream, you'll get access to DreamSpark where you're able to download all sorts of Microsoft licenses. It's it's really great for especially if you want to mess around with a bunch of different Microsoft stuff. So, or you can do more shady things. I don't know. Yes, sir. I have. You said Proxmox. Proxmox. Okay, hold on. There's an easier way to do this. I'm just going to shove the microphone in your face. That'll work. Sorry. Uh, Proxmox is basically a free version of VMware's bare metal hypervisor that costs three, four thousand dollars a year. It's completely free. It's called Proxmox. P R O X M O X. I've used it for a few years now, and it's great. Um, there was a website that you were talking about. I forget what its name was um, that you were on. Uh, hackthesite.com is another great place to go. You can register on there, and they have simulations that you can go through um, for 
coding and stuff like that. It starts out at like HTML and then you work your way up from that. And Sophos offers their enterprise grade firewall free for home users now, um, which again is several thousand dollars if you were to purchase it. Um, along with their antivirus is actually free for home users now as well. And I just wanted to mention that just because, yeah. Uh, pro sorry. <laughs> Uh, Proxmox is spelled P-R-O-X-M-O-X, -O -O and that's, yeah, X. Uh, Sophos, I may be saying it wrong, S-O-P-H-O-S. -O yeah, sorry, if I admit, could have been saying it wrong. Uh, but yeah, their enterprise firewall is completely free now for anyone at home. Um, you do get a little warning, though, um, that says this is for home use only. So, if, you know, if you're a small company trying to use it, obviously don't do that. Um, also, you had mentioned PFSense. I actually use that in my home lab. I've used it for about three years now. They have a package. Um, Snort is intrusion detection. I learned a lot. I'm still actually, I'm a student going through school right now. And it's been a very great resource for me uh, to use along with uh, PF Blocker is a geo blocker that Snort or that uh, PFSense also has that's, again, is completely free to use. And I learned a heck of a lot using that. And I just wanted to mention that. I expect you to speak at ShowMeCon next year. So, <laughs> any any others? I got a lot of great stuff, kind of open source in this stuff. Anything else? Yes, sir. Virtual Router Viata. Can you spell that for me? V Y A T T A. Okay. I you Google it. You'll get close enough and figure it out. And it's a virtual router. You said. Okay. Command structure similar to Cisco, but not identical. Okay. Anything else? This is really good. We got, I mean, we got the room to ourselves for the rest of the afternoon. So anyone else? Pico. Okay. Okay. So Pico, Pico CTF .com. Um So that is something I didn't mention is, is a lot of this, a lot of stuff's online. Uh, Sans Holiday Hack Challenge, they're leaving that up now and they've got walkthroughs so you can start uh, playing around in that. And if you get stuck, just go look for a walkthrough and, and kind of get an understanding of what you need to be doing. All right. Thank you. Go build that home lab. <laughs>